Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Nocturnal. How are you? Hey, Good good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So let's talk season three. You know, we were the show's returned after a two year hi- hiatus. So what are you both excited for fans to see? I think, you know, this season takes uh, big swings and like delivers uh, us on on what it set up. Uh, but at at 100 miles an hour, which I'm really excited about. We're taking these characters and kind of continuing to have them struggle in the ways that they do, but at a, at a really heightened, uh, the most heightened so far. I'm excited because we have two um, beloved, uh, you know, side characters that come into play in Drew and, sorry, in Carrie and Brooke's storylines. And I think audiences are really going to be excited and happy to spend a lot of time with them as it was for us to spend time with them. And what changes do you feel your characters have made in their overall development from season two to season three? I keep saying that like the higher they go, the more themselves they continue to be in a way that really bites them in the ass. (laughs) Um, You know, it's as Drew said, they're flying at this high altitude, but can't still can't quite navigate um, how to figure that out. It's all about, you know, what is the right thing to be doing? Who am I? And, you know, how do I fit into this world that makes sense and like constantly striving in a way that um, makes for a lot of, frankly, we think good TV. (laughs) Yeah, I think they are, they're, they're, when they get success, they're they're still struggling with how to let it in um, Mm -hmm. and not judge it and be like, this hasn't, this isn't how I thought it was going to be, or I want it to be different. Um, It's not making me happy. Uh, How can I control it even harder to make me feel better in it? Um, And they, they struggle to just kind of be where they are and, and, you know, love themselves there. Yeah. I think that's an interesting theme too, is getting to getting what you think you want. And then what does that actually feel like? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when my friends and I watch the show, I'm always like rooting for both of your characters. I'm like, I just want the best for them. I truly do. So when I was watching season three, like I was like, I I find like you you both your characters very relatable because like as you mentioned, sometimes we get to that point and it's like, is it enough or is it not enough or what do I have to do to make it feel like it's enough, you know? Yes, mm-hmm. my God, a hundred percent. And also, how do I make sure like p- other people know I'm doing great? Like, how do I make sure that I seem a certain way, you know? Right. Yeah, because it does feel like a lot of times they are doing it to have their perception be how people perceive them be how they want to be perceived versus just being who they are and they will be perceived that way. So I think they're really seeking outward validation and they're struggling with it. Definitely, definitely. And my last question is, what three words would you both use to describe season three? Surreal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, God, I'm too I'm too old to use this word, but cringe. <laughs> like it even felt like it made cringe me coming so, out of you. <laughs> yeah, like I that was cringe me saying it. Um. Yeah. What's the other? Oh, God, wigs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stay tuned for wigs. <laughs> yes. Um uh I yeah, heightened. Uh-huh. Um I mean, I, I think they just absolutely threw everything they had at this. That's not one word, and they <laughs> did it. Did it. <laughs> I agree. And I would throw hilarious in there as well. Okay, good. Well, good. We you wanna... said that, not us. So Yeah, we didn't want to self-congratulate. <laughs> but of course, funny, hilarious, moving, uh, genius, all those. Yeah, brilliant, incredible, Drew, yes. Helena, amazing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Everything. Absolutely, yes. Thank you both so much for speaking with me. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Rick with the Nocturnal. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So we're here for season three. So tell me, what are you excited for fans to see after this two year hiatus? Ooh, you know, I'm excited to see where everybody I'm excited for the fans to see where everybody is uh, in the show, like where they start it, because I think the pandemic and these past three years have been challenging for everybody and everyone had a different approach to how to navigate that and I think our characters are no different and so you get to see I'm excited for you to see where Brooke and Lance are at I'm excited for you to see where Carrie's at with his career and then you know as and Molly um as Pat and in case I, everybody has I think taken another step in their lives that maybe they weren't expecting right away and then um with Curtis too like to just see him sort of following in Carrie's footsteps hosting those shows that Carrie let him have after the end of season two. It's been really fun. Right. And one of the things I like so much about the show is I watched season two. And then when I watched season three, it's like there wasn't like the pandemic wasn't really the focus. It was no. the characters and how they've elevated and where they're at in their lives now. And I really like seeing that because I didn't want to see the pandemic again. I didn't want to relive really the pandemic. So it was like good to see them elevate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm always nervous when I bring it up, too, because I'm like, oh, no, 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 but it's not like a COVID show or anything like that. But it definitely like, you know, you everybody has like you get to just see the product of it. It's like it happened. We went through it. There it is. But then you get to see like, oh, OK, great. These people have now made these decisions based on what we all went through. Yeah, exactly. And this season, we're going to see a lot more of your character, Curtis, like you mentioned. So how would yeah. you describe your character's role this season? You know, oh gosh, that's a great, you know, I think, you know, for so much of the show, Curtis has been that shoulder that, that Carrie can lean on. And I think he really, and Curtis really prides himself on being a good friend. And he prides himself on his found family, his chosen family in this world is his group of friends. And, and this season you get to see a little bit more of his life outside of just his relationship with Carrie. Um, but you get to see how much it means to him that when you're in his orbit, what does it mean and what does he expect from you and what do you what what should you expect from him? And this season, I think for the first time ever, maybe you get to see his relationship with Carrie tested a little bit and not in the way that you would think, because I think like sometimes success can, you know, alter a friendship, especially in a business like this or any any industry, really. But really what it comes down to is how you deal with that success and what you choose to focus on. And I think Curtis is somebody that cares about his friends and cares deeply about those people around him. And that if you don't, then then you got to readjust, you know? And so I think it's, I, I really described it as a drama, but I swear <laughs> to God, it's funny. <laughs> it is, it is. I, there was, a, there was points in the show where I was just sitting there and my stomach was hurting because I was laughing so much. <laughs> oh, the, good. There is, it is comedic. It, it is. It's a mood. <laughs> <laughs> And things have been very busy for you. You were in the film Renfield. You also mm -hmm. star in Ghosts and it just got renewed for season three. And you have season three of this show that's premiering on May 4th. So how are you balancing it all? You are so busy. You know, oh, I am. I'm, I'm very lucky. Very lucky. Totally get that. Um, I, Yeah, it, it was, a, you know what? I would say when, when I finished both, I shot Ghosts and... Um, the other two at the same time. And so on my off weeks from Ghosts, I would go down to New York City and shoot, and then I would come back. And I would say that <laughs> when January ended and I was we were done, I was very tired. And <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, um, this was an intense amount of time. However, it's been it's been great. You know, I think it's so funny in this business, you never know when some things are going to release or how that calendar is going to play out. And then these were all sort of clumped together a little bit. And so it's been really, really fun and exciting to have a couple different projects out there that people can can see and um, think that they're all three different characters, which is really nice. And I'm excited about getting to play that range. Definitely, definitely. And in season two, you know, you had more, you had a writing role in the show. And this season, because of everything I mentioned that you're doing, you don't have that writing role and you're focusing more, we're focusing more on Curtis. So yeah. tell me, like, is that a shift for you? How has it been? When Chris and Sarah called me and they told me that Curtis was going to be 
um, in the season a lot more this year. I was obviously like super, super excited. I will say that when I knew the writer's room was starting, I really, really wanted to be a part of it. But again, I, I think I was filming Renfield at the time and I wasn't able to be there. And um, I definitely felt like I was like, had like some FOMO um, because I just know all the work and all the funny stuff that goes into those writers' rooms, uh, into that writers' room, and um, all the jokes that kind of come out of it, and you just, I just really love being a part of it. But this year, um, I'm kind of glad that I wasn't in a way because I think when you know, I, I always tried to balance like you know, you're you're trying to write for the show, you're not just trying to write for your character. So I would have knowing that Curtis would have was going to be a little bit more of a prominent role this season. I would never have wanted to like shift it one way or the other. I was really lucky to just get the scripts and see the story that they put out and um, would have have been. It, it was a really, really fun, fun experience this year, getting to go back to just being an actor on the show. My last question is, if you could use three words to describe this season, what would they be? Oh, my goodness. Um, let's say the three words I would use to describe this show are this season, cringe in the best way. You and Drew uh, gave the same answer. Did, did we? Oh, my God. He's my cringe. boy. He said cringe, too. Yeah. Uh, he is my, oh my God, he is my, I love that man so much. Um, so cringe, um, brutal, mm. and cringe, brutal, and honestly, like, just like hilarious, like cringe, brutal, and hilarious. That's actually the best way I could describe this show. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you, though. After watching season three, I see each one of those words. <laughs> awesome. Good. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> we are. We are. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It was truly a pleasure. Thank you. I love your colors, by the way, on the shirt. Thank you. I awesome. had to make sure. I was like, I need a pop of color for this show because Hell yeah. I loved okay. it. I love it. I need it to show show. out. <laughs> oh, you do. You've shown out. It looks great. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Nocturnal. How are you? Hi, Rebecca. Good. How are you, Rebecca? I'm good. I'm good. So we're back for season three. Yeah. And so after this two-year hiatus, what do you think you're excited for fans to see? I'm excited for them to see a third season of the other two because the first two seasons, I think, are, you know, some of the funniest television out there. And, and, I, and I think that they, Chris and Sarah, did not, uh, hesitate or or lose a step with this third season. In fact, I think it's bigger and they take some big, big, big swings that I think, you know, um, they land, they stick the landing and, it, and, and yet they still somehow are able to maintain the heart of the story, which is, I think, the most important part of it. True. And it, the season three cuts three years forward. So you see my character, Pat, who now has like a media empire. She's, you know, Oprah level fame. She's in the public eye. She's trying to manage all that. And um, her kids, Carrie and Brooke are doing better than ever too. So they're a little more in control of their lives. Her son, Chase Dreams, is turning 18 and figuring all that out. You just see a lot of changes. And like like Ken just said, the our showrunners, our brilliant showrunners, Chris Kelly and Sarah Schneider do take Big swings is the best word, like comedically and, uh, but they always keep the emotional heart of the story too, which is the great balance they always strike so well. There's a big musical in this uh, in this uh, season. I'm not going to tell you with whom, but there's a big musical. Yes, yes. And I think Molly, to touch on your point is that that's one of the things I love so much about this season is that we get to see how everybody's developed past the pandemic. Like we yeah. know what happened, but where is everybody now? So I think that's one of my favorite things that like happened. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah, you get to check in with them. And things have changed. They have really like, wow, they've really gone on to levels that we didn't expect and my character even speaks differently she's gotten really confident and she's she she speaks differently than she would have in the first season so that was wild to get used to she's changed a little you know and embraced her it, you can't help but change you you know that type of thing one thing I liked was also how everything left off in season two the conversations that everybody had with each other basically just letting it all out on the table so as we go into season three what do you think is going to be surprising or different for viewers 
I mean, I think it's, it, you know, we're going to get to, uh, I, I, we see more of um, uh, Josh this season. We see more of Brandon this season. I think that there's, there's a lot of, they, you know, the, Chris and Sarah, you know, started ex exploring more of the characters in the world of, of, uh, uh, you know, Elena and Drew's characters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why am I, I know their names. Hold on. Yeah. I know their names. I'm just thinking of the actors. Uh, Carrie and Brooks characters, you know, like, and, and so it's fun to watch the mixing and matching of everybody uh, that we've al already established the first couple of seasons. So, so to see, you know, these new kind of uh, mixtures, uh, you know, uh, tend to um, bring forth some, uh, you know, uh, fireworks. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's, yeah, at the center of the story is still always family because it's really important to Pat to keep her family together. So you always still, it's a family story. And I think that's what makes it so great. It's sweet. It, it's my favorite kind of comedy where, you know, they do broad strokes. It's hilarious. It's excellent writing. But then at the end, it's very emotional and uh, has a tremendous amount of heart. It's like my favorite kind of movie, character driven comedy. And I think it's, it's just, it's my favorite kind of thing to watch where you can laugh and then you feel kind of choked up. It's heart, heartwarming. Definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a fruit salad of emotions. Exactly. <laughs> it's a fruit yeah. salad of emotions. Yeah. 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 Thank you both so much for speaking with me today.